You know, all of this Resident Evil talk about Village coming out has me thinking of a different Resident Evil game. Resident Evil Survivor. Way back in the day, I'm talking like between like 1999 and 2000 possibly, around when uh, PlayStation was really big, there was a game called Resident Evil Survivor. Yes, a lot of you diehard fans remember it. It was a first-person shooter with unlimited handgun ammo, starring a guy named Ark Thompson. Just, just he was just like this reporter in a green hoodie that went to this island. It was, it was like a very similar island to the one from Code Veronica. It was the same situation. Umbrella had a facility there. T virus leaked out, t turned everybody on the island into zombies. The same thing. There are even Mr. X's rolling around, and a new tyrant. In 1998, a disaster struck the quiet Midwestern residents of Raccoon City. An uncontrollable outbreak of the umbrella-created T-Virus transformed the city into an inescapable death trap. To stop the outbreak from spreading, Umbrella Incorporated was forced to wipe out the entire city. However, this was not the only location where an outbreak occurred. So, Ark Thompson goes to investigate this shit and he uh, has a run-in with this guy Vincent, who apparently is like this game's Wesker. And then when Ark Thompson goes to confront the guy, uh, the shit hits the fan and, you know, there's a huge helicopter crash and it, it's pretty bad. Yeah! Pretty much the end result is Ark Thompson loses his memory and starts to think that he's actually Vincent. You look familiar, but... Oh, um, but I just can't remember. Ark Thompson, huh? Though I can't remember anything, I know that this was no way for anyone to die. Uh, I guess no one's ever seen this Vincent guy on the island, so... Everybody just assumes that Ark Thompson is Vincent for whatever reason. Uh, I guess like just a bunch of bad shit happens around him and he just coincidentally looks like the bad guy. V Vincent. Who is this? Vincent? Who's that? Wait. Am I Vincent? Vincent. You are a murderer. A murderer. A murderer? What are you talking about? Answer me. Who did I kill? So then you encounter the, this uh, Danny DeVito looking guy who I guess like runs the sewer underground and he thinks that you're Vincent and he has like some kind of vendetta against you. And so, like, pretty much, like, the entire time you encounter him, he's just an asshole. Vincent? It's me, your mother! My mother? Vincent, please, listen to your mother. I want you to leave Umbrella. I want you to stop performing those terrible crimes and just come back home. You end up running into like this little girl named Lily and her brother Lot, who are pretty much terrified of you. I guess they think that you're Vincent or something, but yeah. Um, there's like a scene where like Lot tries to run from you, but the animation's like fucking garbage, and it looks like he's sprinting like two feet. I, I, I don't know. It's weird looking. But pretty much, they're like these Australian or British kids or whatever, and their family. It's just MIA. I think they might have worked for Umbrella or got murdered or they may even be zombies. I don't remember. Why am I doing this video if I don't remember half the game? I just am. <laughs> I won't allow you to escape. 
You're going to pay for what you've done. <laughs> Anyway, there's a lot of reoccurring BOWs. Uh, I don't remember any liquors being there, but I know hunters were there. Uh, IVs, of course. Cerberus. There are also like these new things that are like amphibious. They're like a cross between hunk and a hunter. I'm sure there's a name for them, but I don't know. Remember your mission. We're doing a clean sweep of the area. Everyone and everything must be cleansed! Now move out! But yeah, you shoot them and they make like this really strange like fucking sound. I guess Umbrella released those to cover its tracks throughout the city. And like I said, Mr. X, uh, there's all kind of other shit, too. A picture? No. This is me. I am Vincent. It was all my fault. And I don't think every other gun had infinite ammo, it was only the handgun. But damn it, it was fun. I wish they would have remastered this one for like Xbox One or something. But it's one of those spin-off games like Dead Aim or Outbreak that will probably just never get mentioned again. You know, and it kind of sucks. Um, I don't even know if it's canon. I mean, I guess it is canon, but I don't know. Not sure. They never really mention it, so. Um... Hang on! I'm sorry. Please forgive me. What are you talking about? It's not your fault. Vincent is the one who caused everything. Well, I mean, I... You? What do you mean? You're the detective. Your name is Ark Thompson. What? I came to the island to uncover the truth about the outbreak. Um, and, you know, you confronted Vincent, who's this dude, and then he tries to escape, and then there's like a whole helicopter scene, and yeah, that's like the intro to the game. And then, once your memory comes back, you continue the quest to like, figure out what the fuck is going on. Um, you have another run-in with Vincent. This time, I think he gets killed or something. And then you're left to fight a tyrant while the island self-destructs. So there's a few different things that happen here. Uh, the tyrant, in one scenario, kills the little Danny DeVito guy. But depending on the choices that you make throughout the game, or whatever doors you go through, or however it works, uh, in certain cases, the tyrant will kill Vincent, so yeah. In typical fashion, like every other Resident Evil game, the facility that you're in is about to blow up and you're left fighting a giant monster. I mean, I'm not saying there's a pattern, but just a little bit, just a little bit. So uh, you're on this helipad fighting a tyrant. Oh, that's never been done before. And you blow them up with a rocket launcher, I believe. Oh, really? Where'd they get that idea from? And then you escape. I think there might be like a little like like synopsis after the fact or something telling you what happens with Art Thompson, but I don't remember. I think they kind of just leave it up in the air. Like, oh, he got away and that's about it. I don't know. And of course, 
just when you think everything's safe, you know, the city blows up and you're riding away, here's the fucking tyrant again. This time you take him out with a nuke and then he gets blown up, uh, kind of like the one dude did in Kick-Ass at the end. It'd be really nice to have like a sequel to this, or like I said, a remake. Um, Capcom could definitely like revamp the story and like modernize it and make it more elaborate, you know? Uh, I would definitely love to play this game again. Unfortunately though, as I still do have the game, uh, the PlayStation 1 is a little worse for wear. And I don't think this is one of those backwards compatible ones. Anywho, that was Resident Evil Survivor. As vague as I was being, uh, I tried to explain it. And yeah, it was a great game. So, that's about it. Alright, enjoy Resident Evil Village, because I know I will. Bye. Resident Evil Village, or 8. What a crazy game. There were twists and turns, there were lichens, you know, werewolves, uh, tall fucking bitches with Freddy Krueger gloves, uh, Ethan Winters, Mia, Chris Redfield, all kinds of twists and turns. Um, and the reveal at the end with Ethan, stay tuned for that. And by the way, spoilers, motherfucker! Alright guys, so with that being said, let's just get right into it. Starting off three years after the events of Resident Evil 7, Chris moved Ethan and Mia to Europe, far, far away from the Baker house, to live a peaceful life with their new daughter, Rose. Chris has also apparently been training Ethan this whole time. So anyway, as they're preparing for dinner one night, Mia is being a straight up bitch and is basically giving Ethan a cold shoulder. For no good reason. I guess it doesn't really help that Ethan keeps mentioning what happened three years ago, like constantly, to which she's like not even acknowledging it. That's a bit sketch. Anyway, so just as things are calming down, Chris and the BSAA show up and gun Mia down, Robocop style. And then, he drags Ethan and Rose out of the house against their will. Suddenly, you wake up as Ethan amongst the wrecked BSAA vehicle and slaughtered soldiers in a snowy remote village. After encountering what townspeople are left, you come to the conclusion that the town has been overrun by Lycan. That's werewolves for you uninitiated! This is somewhat connected to some chick named Mother Miranda, who apparently has kidnapped Rose. These lichen are pretty easy to fight, but of course, upon your first encounter, one bites your damn fingers off. So there's that. You meet a merchant known simply as the Duke, who bears no resemblance to the guy from RE4, in case you were wondering. This guy is pretty crucial though throughout the game. He gives you everything from weapon mods to recipes for how to make your own ammo. And you can even go around the village hunting animals and you give the meat back to the Duke for health upgrades. But aside from that, we don't really learn much more about his identity, like at all. Anyway, so after that, you gain access into Alcina Demetrus Castle, where this 15 foot tall Freddy Krueger handed bitch stalks you around relentlessly, kind of like Mr. X or Nemesis. I mean, you're going around trying to find your way out, solving all these clues, and she's like right behind you the whole damn time. She's accompanied by her three daughters, whom are pretty much made out of like these flying bugs, and they're all vampires, so they're just after your blood. The daughters are pretty easy to kill with the help of some cold air, so if you knock a hole through the wall, you could pretty much crystallize them, and that's about it. Which is kind of weird because the way things crystallize in this game is very similar to Zoe in Resident Evil 7. Remember that DLC with like the fucking punching guy? I don't really know if it's related to that or not, but it's pretty similar. Oh yeah, and not only do you fight lichens this whole time, but in the castle there are these weird resurrected corpse looking things and they just kind of run at you, kind of like crimson heads. As you progress through the castle, you see a lot, and I mean a lot, of Umbrella logos. Like, that logo is everywhere. So what the hell does that mean? Throughout the demo and the initial trailer for the game, it seems as though Dimitrescu is the main antagonist. But nope, far from that. So there's a scene where she chases you down to the dungeons and actually cuts your hand clean off. Okay, great. So now we have like three fingers on one hand and a nub. What the hell am I supposed to do with this? 
Oh, but don't worry, though. He just splashes a bit of that healing stuff on his nub and jams the hand back on and good as new, because science. After a crazy rooftop battle, where she turns into like this flying dragon looking thing, you learn that she's actually one of four antagonists of the game. And after defeating Alcina, you obtain a flask housing part of Rose's body. So Mother Miranda separated Rose into four parts, putting each part in a flask and giving it to one of these villains. So you pretty much have to defeat the villain to get a piece of Rose's body back. That's kind of morbid, but Resident Evil, you know. So once you're free from the castle, you move on to a small house in the corner of the village, home to Donna Benevito. Upon investigating, you don't really encounter her, like, at all. Instead, you find a shitload of creepy dolls all around the house, and even one modeled after Mia. Just when you think things are weird enough, you're ambushed by this giant mutant fucking fetus. Yeah, that's what I said. It's a giant slimy baby. After successfully evading that nightmare, you play hide-and-seek with a creepy-ass doll, which I guess has Donna's consciousness in it. And then you just stab the shit out of it with scissors until it's dead. Here, you grab another flask and journey to the flooded outer limits of the village to face Moro, a hunchback little asshole who's been doing experiments with a parasite called a Kadu, resulting in these things that we've been fighting the whole time. But more on that later. So here, you have to drain the water from this area to progress, but in order to do that, you have to fight a mutated version of Moral, who is now a giant fish creature. He's pretty easy to take down, just use an abundance of pipe bombs and mines, which you can either find or buy from the duke. Be careful though, because he vomits like this acidic shit all over you, and it pretty much kills you. So after this fight, you get yet another flask and drain the water. Here you learn that Heisenberg, the fourth villain, actually wants to help you take down Mother Miranda, who is the real main antagonist of the game, and the one that's behind what's going on in the village. He willingly gives up his flask to you, and you head to his factory. So up until this point, you slowly start seeing little BSAA stations set up throughout the area, like Chris is looming about, but we never actually see him. Alright, so... This factory part was literally the hardest part of the game. It's so hard to navigate this labyrinth of bullshit. I kept getting lost, and there's like five floors, and everything looks the same. It's fucking annoying. Anyway, so you traverse these five levels of this factory, and you have to fight through hordes of these mechanized creatures who are just like townspeople modded with blades and fans and shit. You learn that Heisenberg has also been experimenting on people with the Cadu trying to create some kind of vessel or something. Heisenberg asks you to join his side and take down Miranda, and you pretty much tell him to go fuck himself. And seeing as to how he's got Magneto powers, he drops you like 15 stories and leaves you for dead. Suddenly you run into Chris, who shows up to take Miranda down once and for all. Here you also learn that Mia was never actually killed in the beginning. It was Miranda, masquerading as Mia to kidnap Rose. So... Miranda has the ability to shapeshift, thanks to the mold, and she turned into Mia to trick you. And yes, I'm talking about the mold from the previous game. So then, she faked dying, and when they were transporting her body, she attacked the BSAA and stole Rose. Which is where you wake up as Ethan in the beginning. So as Chris heads topside to deal with her, you take on Heisenberg, who is now a giant transformer, I guess? He's pretty easy to kill, just gun him down with the tank that Chris supplied you. Alright cool, so now all four of them are dead and we take on Miranda. Chris clearly tells you to wait for his backup, but fuck it. Upon encountering Miranda, her agenda becomes clear as she tells you she needed Rose to use as a vessel to resurrect her own daughter Eva, who died of Spanish flu in the 1800s. Yeah, so Miranda's pretty old. Hearing this, you go into a rage and go in guns blazing, and then she immediately rips your heart out and kills you. Great, so Ethan's dead. You take over as Chris as you fight your way through the village, which is now on fire. BSAA helicopters are airdropping soldiers throughout the village to help you. You fight your way past Mold and travel deep underground to find Mia in a holding cell. Yes, the real Mia. Chris tells her that Ethan is dead, and she's like, nah brah, you don't even know what Ethan is. Um, okay, what the hell does that mean? 
Chris then stumbles upon Miranda's lab deep underneath the village, where the bomb really drops. Are you ready? So, Miranda is a scientist from the 1800s who discovered the mold in a cave in this village decades ago. She learned that it has certain properties that can bring back her daughter, but she still needed a host. That's where Alcina and gang come into play. Each of them were people from the village who were implanted with the Cadu parasite in hopes that they could be a vessel for Eva. It gave each of them certain heightened abilities, but they were still not good enough. The ones experimented on that rejected the parasite turned into lichens. Also to note, a company took a sample of the mold and Eva's DNA and used it to create Evelyn. That's right, the mold from RE7 originated here, and yeah. Lastly, and this is the most shocking part, the discovery of the mold and its potential gave one of Miranda's students the idea to start a pharmaceutical company. It was only then the student decided to go with a certain flower from Africa instead of the mold. Who was that student? Um, yeah, Oswell Spencer. He also got the umbrella logo from the symbols that were all throughout the village. Oh, okay, here we go. From here, it goes into a cutscene where Ethan is in some kind of purgatory with Evelyn. And here's the kicker. Ethan says that he has to live to save Rose, to which Evelyn replies, he's been dead all along. Yep, Jack actually killed Ethan in the beginning of Resident Evil 7. So, the mold, like I said, has the ability to absorb people's consciousness and can mimic someone's attributes. Kind of like that virus from the game Prototype, if you've ever played that. What this means is, this whole freaking time, Ethan was just mold that was pretending to be Ethan. It's crazy, I know. So Ethan manages to pull through just long enough to take on Miranda one last time. And after a heated battle, which isn't really hard as long as you have enough ammo, Miranda disintegrates and Rose is free. Chris shows up to take them to safety, but Ethan is slowly dying because he's made out of mold himself. He decides to stay behind and sacrifice himself to detonate a bomb that Chris placed deep within the mold. So yeah, Ethan's dead. For sure this time. As they fly off, it's brought to Chris's attention that the BSAA were actually airdropping in BOWs, not soldiers. And Chris vows to head to BSAA's headquarters for answers. Could this be our Resident Evil 9? I guess we'll have to see. We then cut to some years later, as Rose is an adult and visits her father's grave. She's quickly summoned back to their vehicle by an agent of some kind. I don't know if he's government or BSAA or what. They don't really say. But she does make mention that she has powers now, left over from her exposure to the mold. Or maybe because her dad was made of mold? I don't know. Either way, she's got like a Sherry Birkin situation happening. So they get in the car and drive off and... That's it. So, I think this game was phenomenal. I mean, the gameplay was excellent. The ammo crafting and the weapon mods were really good. The fight scenes were just intense and satisfying. And they weren't too difficult. And then the Shyamalan twist at the end with Miranda being Spencer's teacher. And the mold basically being the inspiration for Umbrella. And then the reveal that Ethan died in the last game. It was just, it was almost too much, to be honest. So now we're set up for another game, possibly where we go with Chris to the BSAA headquarters to find out if they're corrupt or not. My only question is, what the hell happened to Blue Umbrella? I mean, Chris was working for Blue Umbrella at the end of 7, but I know they retconned a lot of shit there, so who's to say? Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't, go out and get yourself a copy of this game, because it is the bee's knees. Alright, stay tuned for the next one or possibly any DLC that I cover for this. Bye!